Hey there guys, I'm James and in this video I'm going to show you how to create this solid oak raised sleeper bed. Now I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks on how to make this as strong and last as long as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Solid oak sleepers are naturally resistant to rot, but if you were going to be using softwood sleepers, I would definitely recommend digging out the ground and laying down uh, scalpings or some sort of a hardcore for the sleepers to sit on. That's just going to give drainage for any water that gets down there. Now that will mean that the sleepers won't be sat in the wet soil and it will reduce the chances of rot. But because we're using solid oak, we're not going to go for all that extra hard work and labour. And we're going to just paint bitumen on every single surface of the sleeper that's in contact with wet soil. And that's going to make it last a lot longer. Now, as I said before, I'm going to be adding this black bitumen paint to all of the surfaces of the sleepers that come in contact with wet soil. It's a waterproofing paint that's used a lot for many applications in the construction industry, but it's going to stop water from penetrating the wood, and that's going to considerably slow down the rotting process. Now you'll want to get this painted on well before you come to lay the sleepers, because you'll need it to dry first, and it's going to take you two coats of paint. So we're going to be stacking these sleepers on the narrow end and not the wider end. This is to obviously give us an extra height without using so many sleepers. These oak sleepers aren't cheap. So we've bitch them in the bottom of the sleeper, which is going to be in contact with the ground. Normally you'd have to put in corner posts and posts for each of the joins on the sleepers if you're installing a long sleeper raised bed. But because we've already got a post concreted into the ground in the corner here, we're just going to tie into this rather than putting another one on the inside of the sleeper. When you're screwing into oak, you absolutely must pilot hole the wood first. Oak is much more dense than softwood and tougher to screw into. If you don't pilot hole first, you run the risk of snapping off the head of the screw. So we're going to be using these timber fast joist screws for screwing the, the sleepers into the posts. These are 150 mil screws, so they're just strong enough to go through the 100 mil sleeper and into the post. So once you've got your first sleeper in position and it's perfectly level, you can then screw through the sleeper and into the supporting post. But as I said earlier, you'd normally have your posts on the inside of the raised bed and you'd screw through your supporting posts and into the sleepers. We've got a join here where the two sleepers butt up to each other. What you'd normally do is you dig a hole and set a post right on this join so you can screw these two sleepers into that wooden post. But I'm not going to do that on here because I've already got posts set behind which these are screwed into. We're going to be stacking the sleepers in a brickwork fashion so the next sleeper will run over the top of this join and the join for the next layer of sleepers will be further up and that's not going to go anywhere. Of course if you didn't have these posts here or if I didn't have these posts here I would be setting a post in the ground and screwing in through that just to support that join. To cut this oak you're going to need something serious to cut through it though. Uh, handsaw just isn't going to cut it. So you'll need either a circular saw or a chop saw. You can use a chainsaw but it's going to give you a much rougher cut. My chop saw blade wasn't quite long enough to cut all the way through the sleeper. So I had to then flip it over and then cut through the rest from the opposite side. Took a bit of extra time to complete, but it did give me a much nicer cut on the ends. Okay, so every post that you put in the ground, we're gonna paint with this bitumen, really coat it and that's just going to protect it from rotting in the ground 
course it's going to be completely covered with soil because it's fitted on the inside of the uh, sleeper. So you want to paint pretty much the whole thing and I'll finish off the rest once it's in place. Make sure everything's level and then screw in. And then just finish off the rest of the paste and the top once you've got it in position. So you only need to bury your posts about a foot in the ground for the raised bed and that's perfectly adequate to hold everything in position. And then you can top up the post holes with some post mix and set them in concrete just to make sure that everything's secure. Of course you can set all your posts beforehand but it was easier for me to do it this way around because I had limited access to screw everything into place. We've set the post 50 millimeters below the top layer of the sleepers. This is so the posts are hidden below the surface of the soil, but it's sticking up just enough to screw in the top layer of sleepers. We use these posts at the back here as our datum line to get a straight line for our raised bed at the back. But at the front, we're using a line between two points to get our next post in for the support on the raised bed. This is because obviously it's quite a long raised bed and to just get that accuracy, it's always best to put in a string line. Okay, at this point, we've got all our supporting posts in. We've got the first layer of the sleeper bed in and that's the hardest bit. Once you've got that in all completely level, it's pretty plain sailing after that. You just need to obviously fit the, the next layer on top. Now, the good thing is about these supporting posts is that they can be used to set the level of the raised bed because we haven't got the ground completely level here so we've raised it up and screwed it into the supporting posts just to get it completely level all the way around we'll end up backfilling underneath this anyway but they're they're good to just support everything and keep it all completely level the next thing is putting the next layer on and you do that in a brickwork fashion so you offset the joints from the previous one to the next layer. Okay so we've got both of our layers in now, we've gone two sleepers high, these are 100mm by 200mm by 2.4 by the way um, and we have got the internal supporting posts bitumined and we've screwed in through the inside into the oak um, rather than on the outside just to hide all the, the fixings. Although we're using the oak and it's naturally resistant to rot, I still want to somehow protect the inside of this raised bed from the soil contact. And the best way to do that, I find, is to line the inside of the raised bed with a sheet. We're gonna use a plastic sheet, just get the, the thickest stuff you can get. It's basically a damp proof membrane. And we're gonna staple that to the inside of the raised bed, and that's just gonna obviously protect it even more from the wet soil. Okay, so what I did was just measure the depth of the raised bed, and then that's gonna give me the depth of the sheet that I need to cut taken off about an inch because you want to drop the sheeting an inch below the top level of the raised bed because you don't really want that to be showing. Now I'm measuring the internal dimensions of the raised bed. This is to give me the total length of sheeting that is required to wrap the entire inside of the raised bed. You're going to want to lay your sheeting out on a large flat surface to make it easy for you to cut it. I'm using a white 2000 gauge plastic sheeting for extra toughness. You can get different gauges of sheeting um, and you, the higher the rating, the more thick it is. Of course, you're probably better off getting a black sheet to blend in more with the soil, but this was all I could get hold of at the time. Then you wanna mark the depth with a felt tip pen at several points on the sheet. Then you can use a straight edge to join these markings up and then that's ready to cut. 
Once you have all your sheeting cut, it's a simple case of just stapling it on the inside of the raised bed. Now you can use a big staple gun like I'm using now, or you could use some clout nails, so similar to what you'd use for uh, shed felt. Just something that's gonna pin it to the inside of the raised bed. You don't really need to worry too much because by the time you've filled it up with soil, the soil is gonna obviously hold everything in place. So the staples are just really there to hold it for the time being. When you get to the supporting posts on the inside, you'll have to just cut these in around the posts, which is a little bit tricky. And then you can just cut the tops and then fold the tops over to just totally encompass the supporting posts to just make sure that they're not gonna be in contact with any soil. That's gonna give you double protection. So now we've bitumined the bottom of the sleepers, we've bitumined the supporting posts on the inside, we've also wrapped the inside of the sleepers and we're using oak sleepers. Now this is gonna last a very, very long time before it starts to rot. And now you're ready to just fill it up with your soil. I'm going to link every single product I've used in this video in the description box below. So check that out if you wanna source all the materials that I've used in this job. Thank you all for watching and I hope you've liked the video. If you have liked the video, please click that like button as it will really help my channel to grow. Also, if you wanna see more DIY videos, fencing tutorial videos, or anything to do within your garden, then please click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified when new content is uploaded. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.